Among all the diversity of boxers, there is one particular category, those who inspire fear. Most often, this category is occupied by knockout masters whose power is so insane and intimidating that other fighters simply do not want to fight them. Fortunately, these types of guys are rare and mostly fight in the heavyweight division. That's what we thought until the emergence of Gervonta Davis. Competing in the 135-pound category, this genetic mutant has knocked out 26 of his 28 opponents and has never lost to anyone. Tank simply does not trust the judges and each new knockout looks even more intimidating than the previous. Gervonta will soon have the coveted fight against Ryan Garcia, but before that, let's take a look at the top 10 finishes by one of the best knockout artists of our time. Let's start from 2017. Back then, Davies was still a featherweight and considered only a promising newcomer, but no more than that. Before turning pro, he fought in amateurs for many years, where his official record is 220 fights. In four years of pro fights, Davis won 16 fights and got his first career title shot. Davis got the opportunity to fight for the IBF belt, which was hanging around Jose Pedraza's waist at the time. The native of the Island of Champions was a rather experienced and skilled boxer, also going undefeated and defending his title for the third time. The ring was divided between two southpaws, which was already interesting in terms of technique. The shorter Gervonta acted very intelligently and constantly stepped up to the middle or even short distance where he controlled the skinny Pedraza due to his advantages and rough physical strength. Jose moved well at first, clearly working his front hand and hitting often, but gradually his lightness of footwork went away and Davis's guns were aimed at him. In the seventh round, the tank caught his opponent with a right hook and knocked him out. The Puerto Rican was barely conscious and definitely not ready to continue. After becoming the world champion at the age of 23, Davis immediately created a lot of buzz around his persona. Floyd Mayweather, who became the young talent's head coach, generated the most interest towards the youngster. Money needed a light sparring partner with the guy to realize that Gervonta was a future star. So, under the guidance of a phenomenal trainer, Davies began to absorb skills and experience alike and took his first fight as champion. Unbeaten and renowned in Britain, Liam Walsh, with a record of 21-0, dared to share the ring with him. Again, a southpaw faced the tank, but he was not too bothered by the similar stance. Davies looked genuinely explosive in the first round and created dangerous moments, but in the second round, he abruptly went still and let his opponent get to work. Against this backdrop, Liam escalated his attacks, especially in the clinch, where he repeatedly threw combinations of punches at the champion. The local crowd supported Walsh as the fight was taking place at his homeland, but they didn't have long to cheer. In the third round, Gervonta hit him with a powerful left hook, and as soon as he felt blood, he started to hammer these punches one after another like nails. Liam was stunned, missed more, and collapsed on the canvas. And when he got up, a final left hook ended the fight. After failing the weigh-in for one of his title fights, Tank realized that it would be a big deal for him to continue his career as a featherweight, so he started slowly setting up for the transition. Before that, he was going to defend his newly acquired WBA super title, on which Hugo Ruiz already locked his eyes. The Mexican was not the most stable fighter, but a spectacular one, who likes to knock people out spectacularly. Official statistics show that there was a two-fold difference between them in experience of fighting professionally, but when the guys met, it didn't help Ruiz at all. Davies only let one small punch hit him, and after, he responded viciously. With one of the first punches, he broke the Mexican's nose, and then he pressed Hugo against the ropes and delivered such a tough and fast combination that his opponent realized it only when Gervonta stepped back from him. The tank ended the fight with one combination.
here comes the American's last fight in his native featherweight division. The second defense of his WBA Super Belt will be in summer 2019, and even before he came to the ring, it was known that his next fight will be in a heavier category. Gervonta needed to end his era in this category nicely, and to do so, he was given an other showman, the Panamanian puncher Ricardo Nunes, who was on 10 win streaks with 9 knockouts. It's unclear what Ricardo thought the fight would be, but he was armed with a simple 1-2 combination against this monster. So, shooting a trivial punch, Nunes tried to keep his distance while the champion was hammering his viscera. Gervonta felt completely comfortable moving his bazookas from the opponent's body to his head whenever he wanted, all the while being surprised by Ricardo's monotonousness. In the second round, the tank exploded with a left hook and made his opponent dance before turning on a full 110% and hammering the Panamanian to a stoppage. At the time of the Americans' move to a new weight class, not everyone approved of his decision. The fact is that Gervonta, although very powerful, is a rather poorly gifted athlete in terms of size. He did not look big even in the featherweight division, but after changing it, he turned out to be really small in comparison with his colleagues. But the promoters believed in Davis's talent, and so they gave him a really formidable opponent. The winner of the Olympic Games, former WBA interim champion, and just a Cuban hurricane, Yuriorki's Gamboa was the one who welcomed the newcomer. As it turned out, after the category change, Gervonta didn't need any adaptation at all. The champion felt very comfortable, and from the first round, it was clear that experienced Gamboa had little chances of winning. The American fought in a measured and calm way, but just at the right moments he delivered powerful combos and stunned the Cuban, so he knocked him out already in the second round. The tank was responding with three to four punches, but Gamboa's with cast iron head was just eating them till the final bell. With only a couple of minutes left before the end of the fight, Davis delivered a hell of a left uppercut from the clinch and broke his opponent's will. The Cuban didn't get up. One of the most challenging fights of the Baltimoreans' career, and it's not about the opponent, but about the circumstances before the fight. Going into the second defense of his IBF belt in 2017, Gervonta, for the first time, faced the weight cut problems and failed to fit the category limit, thus immediately lost his championship status. Now, only that meant Nicaraguan-born Francisco Fonseca was the one to be able to win the title. As with Davis's two previous opponents, the boy was undefeated and promising, but the lost title worried the tank much more. Fonseca built his game plan on working through the body, followed by head punches, but the tactics for the fight turned out to be so primitive that it worked for a round and a half. From there on, Gervonta read his opponent and did so precisely that he dodged his blows with the hands behind his back. He felt no threat from Francisco, playing with him and hammering in any of his sidekicks at the right moment. When Fonseca realized that nothing was working, he went for a clinch, but the tank had no intention of hugging and after another attempt to tie him up, delivered a short left hook, dropping his opponent to his knees. The loss of the IBF title was nothing but a minor annoyance for the still very young and gifted Gervonta. In addition, he took Fonseca apart and was ready for new interesting challenges, one of which was soon to happen. The American was offered to fight for the vacant WBA superbelt. Another contender was former WBA champion Jesus Cuellar. The Argentinian veteran had been competing at the highest level for many years and had an impressive winning streak which was just recently ended by Abner Marai. In most fights, Davies fights on the basis of his opponent's plans, and this time was no exception. Cuellar imposed aggressive exchanges of punches from the very beginning, so Gervonta said, okay, let's go, and started punching back with the same fervor. Floyd's protege was especially good at hitting Jesus' body, which even led to a knockdown in the second round. The Argentine gradually took more damage and in the third round first found himself on the floor after an excellent combination and then missed two wild hooks and hit the canvas.
Barely settled into the lightweight division and getting used to the new size, in 2012, Gervonta unexpectedly decided to make another transition. This time, the WBA light middleweight title was the main target. The belt at the time was held by the undefeated Mario Barrios, El Azteca with a 26-0 record with no technical virtuoso, but his solid size advantage could have been a major obstacle for the ambitious Davis. What a difficult fight it was for Gervonta. Varios kept a good distance for most of the time due to his huge reach and height, blocking all the tank's attempts to break into the close range. Mario was accurate with a jab or deuce and also countered some approaching attempts with a left hook. It took Davis a long time to find the keys to this huge guy, but he kept making him work and tiring him off, which paid off. In the eighth round, Barrios was knocked down twice and started to fade from then on. Gervonta, on the other hand, ramped up, and in the 11th round, he landed a horrible knockdown through the body and then finished Mario off with a hook to the jaw. Moving up to lightweight, Gervonta faced an entirely new level of competition than before. In his debut, he already fought the Cuban Terminator from the belt. He met a real shark here. The first who Tank defended his new title against was a former lightweight Leo Santa Cruz. The Mexican had an incredible 37-1 record as well as the rare achievement of being the champion in four different weight classes. It was the first time in his career that Gervonta had faced such a dangerous opponent, but he had no emotions about it. Davies continued to encounter briskly with some juicy uppercuts. Santa Cruz ate the blows and did not back down, but went forward with great fervor. For several rounds, the elite boxers exchanged like wild dogs, trying to do as much damage to their opponents as possible. The domination flowed from one to another, with the Mexican's nose being smashed and Gervonta's right eye swollen. So evenly matched, the champions entered the sixth round, where the strongest still managed to be revealed. After the Cruz's right jab, Tank landed a supersonic left uppercut that sent Leo into a deep knockout. One of the most recent works of the American finisher. 2022 was not an easy one for Gervonta, as it was the year he terminated relationships with his manager, head trainer, and mental mentor, Floyd Mayweather. The final straw for Tank was the arrangement of his fight with the undefeated but totally unknown Rolando Romero. Davis believed Roley was not worthy of a title shot, while the challenger was so confident of his abilities that he missed no opportunity to trash talk the champion. As it soon became clear, such behavior was a mistake. Romero was not going to be defensive and rather quickly took over the center of the ring. Turning aggressive, he went forward with powerful combinations but hardly hit his opponent. Gervonta acted calm and composed. Realizing that there were still 12 rounds to go, he let Roland work for a while and then he began to engage. Tank's counter punches looked terrific and the cocky youngster didn't know how to hit the champion. Closer to the halfway point, Roley was already openly rushing at Gervonta, which played a key role in the fight. In the sixth round, Davis cosplayed Floyd Mayweather in a fight with Ricky Hatone and pivoted to destroy Roland with a vicious left. Not all fans like Gervonta Davis. The guy dresses brightly, talks a lot, and draws attention to himself, and not always in a good way. But despite all that, it's hard to turn a blind eye to the achievements that the tank has to his credit. As a lightweight, he has the status of one of the most fearsome knockout master of the modern era. He's taken three weight belts and has never lost a fight. Davis is only 28, and who knows how far he could go. 